Hey everybody, welcome back to the Whitaker Way. I'm Larry. And I'm Erin. And we're here to talk to you today a little bit about our solar uh, and the reason why we went to, uh, to solar and not on the grid. So back in, was it 2019, we purchased our property and it was a small off-grid cabin, had propane lights, um, no water source, and um, we purchased this, this property. And um, as we, we were deciding what we wanted to do, we looked into options of solar versus on the grid. Um, when we went to research this, we found out that the cost to get us on the grid was going to be way more expensive than going solar. So we decided to go the solar route. Yeah, the cost, uh, our first initial quote was almost $30,000. Um, and we thought that was just extremely unreasonable. Uh, not only is it $30,000, you have to pay everything up front. We had to do all the digging to put the wire underground. And we just, you know, we weren't, we weren't happy with that. Uh, we wanted something that, uh, because this is a cabin that we weren't going to, you know, live in. It's not big enough and big enough for us to live in. It's a three season cabin. Uh, we do use it in the winter time, but mostly for hunting. Uh, we don't really go up there to spend weekends up there or anything in the winter, um, which we can, but we, we don't. Um, so we were like, ah, we just couldn't justify $30,000 in order to, you know, get electricity all the way back there. And then we ran into another problem where um, not only will we have to spend the 30 grand, we still have to put like three to four grand of electric in the house. Uh, it's not pre-wired. There was no outlets. There's no switches. There's no light fixtures. There was nothing. So we had another four, three, four grand there. And then maybe, you know, another $200 for the inspection. And it just kept adding up and it was just getting way, way too far out of our budget. Um, and then we were able to talk to them and they came up with a different route for us and it was like 11 grand and still we're like 11 grand for something that, you know, we're eventually going to be building on our property out in the hay field and um, we're going to be building a, you know, a forever home out there uh, probably eight, 10 years down the line, but that's going to be something we retire into. I mean, we didn't want to spend all that money and, you know, find out it's not going to do us any good later in the time, uh, later you know, coming down the line years and years away. So we went solar. Um, we went with a cabin kit from Renogy. It's a 1200 watt kit. Uh, it's four panels, 300 watts a piece. And we have, we built a solar stanchion. Um, my dad came up, Aaron's father came up and we dug holes and faced it to the south. And um, we had to put it a good ways off the tree line though, because the way our property sits, the tree line is south, so we had to um, put it, what's it, about 200 feet? 280 feet. Feet from our cabin. So it was a lot of trenching. Um, we have a, a great story when we went to trench. <laughs> yeah, um, I got this trencher from a local place around, and um, it was on a, uh, a tract machine. And as soon as we started trenching, we knew we were going to have problems because we were hitting a good bit of rocks. And uh, I was up there trenching. Uh, it was during bear season. I figured, okay, it's pouring down rain. I might as well do something productive. And uh, by the time I stuck the trencher in the ground, went another 20 feet from the day before, I think I maybe 20, 25 yeah, feet. wasn't far. Hit a natural gas line <laughs> that wasn't even supposed to be on our property. That was not listed. It wasn't marked. Wasn't yeah. marked. Not listed with 811. Nobody knew this gas line went through our property. Uh, they called us back and said, Hey, you know, we sent out the tickets. We did this, this, and this, we did everything the way we we're supposed to do it. And then boom, I hit this gas line. And of course it was in operation. It was a two inch gas line blowing gas everywhere. Anyways, long story short, we had to get guys out of their tree stands to come fix and repair the line because we didn't want gas, you know, blowing everywhere. But so yeah, we, we used that trencher, got, uh, all the way to the cabin. 
uh, eventually after all that yeah. happened. Well, and, and I think the first time, didn't the, the fire, line blow? The fire department came and all that. And we, we did blow hydraulic line on the trencher. So literally every time we used that trencher, it was, it was something. Um, it, but we think it was lack of maintenance yeah. on behalf of uh, the rental place. Anyways, so we went through all that. We uh, put... I believe it was one and a half or maybe one inch conduit pipe in the ground with four gauge wire running all the way out there. So we have no, it's very minimal amperage drop. I think it's like, oh man, it's, it, it's a really low percentage. And Renogy told us they wanted less than 3%. I want to say we're not even 1% amperage drop between <laughs> our panels and our charge controller, which is great. Um, but um, Renogy's cabin kit, Again, it's 1200 watts, 1200 watt kit, each panel. We have four panels. They're big, big panels, 300 watts a piece. Um, it came with a uh, midnight solar combiner box. So that's directly underneath the panels. And that's where your uh, two breakers. And then it runs into our cabin, into our charge controller, which there's a shut off there as well. And then from the charge controller, that's a midnight classic 150. We're running a 12 volt system just to keep it simple. We didn't want to you know, run a 24 or a 48 volt system because we're a small cabin. Yeah, we um, only are using it really. We have a small refrigerator. Um, we have one TV to use on a rainy day or at night when the kids are, are settling down for bed, some lights, and then if we need to charge some phones or yeah. electronic devices, um, it's really all we, we need it for. Yeah, so um, we, we started out with, uh, like I said, the 12 volt system. Uh, and then we have the uh, another breaker that runs from the charge controller to the batteries so we can shut that down as well and then we have the uh a fuse in line with our uh, our cables to our inverter and we have a, a breaker box just for the whole cabin the cabin's broken down in, in three circuits um the left side the center and the back um, i do have uh one of the circuits in there is a 20 amp circuit just to run heavier power tools uh, but that, that's it like i said it's very simple I think each circuit only has four outlets on it, so it's not it's not a huge draw. But I did uh, wire the one circuit with uh, 12 gauge wire and the other one with 14. And uh, if you know anything about wiring, you would understand why I did that. Um, but if not, no big deal. Uh, I'm not an electrician. Uh, I do know a good bit about it, but I I'm not certified in any way, so that's why I'm not going to go in detail why certain things should be certain ways. But yeah, I pretty much did it all myself. I uh, did it when it was colder out because I was climbing under a cabin where there's chipmunks and squirrels living and all kind of stuff. I used a BX wire, which is a wire wrapped in an aluminum sheeting. Um, so it kind of keeps the animals out of there so they're not biting into anything. And um, I wired all that to myself. Um, my dad helped me out a little bit. I think Aaron's dad helped me out a little bit with that. And uh, it took a long time. I, yeah. I remember, you know, cutting through walls and pulling out insulation and just running the wire through the walls was, oh, my God, a pain in the butt. But it is what it is. It's done now. Um, everything seems to be working great. Um, we, we did just replace our batteries, though. That's the one one thing that I think if we were to do it from start again, we would have yeah. started off with the um, the lithium ion batteries. But I think I think in the last two years, lithium batteries have really come a yeah. long way compared to what we knew about it whenever yeah. we you know initially made the investment. But what was nice about our investment when we made this to go solar, since it's a second technically a second home to us, uh, we were able to get a uh, some kind of subsidy or yeah, the, the tax a rebate program was, yeah, was still at thirty percent then. So um, we were able to get a lot of that money back um, at, during the, our tax rebate, which was nice. Yeah, I want to say our our <laughs> whole system uh, was just a drop in the bucket compared to the thirty grand mm -hmm. that we were thinking about paying, and then on top of that, we would have had to pay every month for the service. Yeah, yeah. So um, we don't pay anything right right now, so, right? It's, yeah, that's it's free. <laughs> that's that's the nice part. Yeah. Um, I, the one thing I didn't talk about was our inverter. Our last video that we put out, um, I I wanted to talk a little bit about this too. Is a three thousand watt Renogy inverter. Uh, it's a 6,000 watt peak for 30 seconds and 3,000 running watts, um, which is kind of overkill for our cabin, but we wanted something a little bit bigger because I'm always messing with stuff. I'm always running, you know, angle grinders or I have um, 
other power tools that we're always you know working with around the property and i didn't want to be running a generator all the time especially during daylight hours you know just with all that sun coming in i'd rather just use the the inverter and um the inverter is also a charger mm -hmm. uh, we have it hooked up to a 110 receptacle and we can run that off of our uh our generator if if the power does uh, dip below what I would call the safe mark. You don't want to run batteries all the way down uh, like our AGM batteries. You don't want to go below 50% charge. And the reason being is it can it can literally, you know, not terminate the life, but make the life of those batteries less and less. Um, so we always like to run those down to no more than like 60%, but what happened with our batteries, which we're not a hundred percent sure. I did test our refrigerator. I think somebody left our refrigerator cracked and the refrigerator just ran around the clock and just killed those batteries. And we're not there all the time, right? This is our yeah. second home, our vacation. So we think something happened and it, and it just drained the battery and, yeah. and, um, we don't get, full sun we're in western pennsylvania so it's not sunny every day here either so it may not have been sunny on top of something happened to the refrigerator and we just think the combination of things may have um, caused those batteries to to so, die out a little earlier than we we had hoped for we put that on our checklist even though we have lithiums now we put that on our checklist <laughs> yeah. every time before we leave camp and the refrigerator's on the three seasons that it's normally on check the refrigerator make sure it's shut <laughs> yeah. um but other than that um with our refrigerator, actually, uh, I did put it on a timer. So it does time out four hours during the night. And then it restarts in the morning whenever the sunlight comes out. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's I think that's all I have to talk about. I talked about the uh, the panels. I talked about the combiner box. Talked about the charge mm -hmm. controller, the circuit box, the inverter and, the batteries yeah and, and like larry everything. said we we installed everything ourselves um so yeah. the wiring putting up the solar panels um putting put creating the the stand that the, the panel stand on so everything we we did did ourselves and ho hopefully aaron will put some uh some pictures in here as well uh a few things that we put together mm -hmm. ourselves because that it really did save us a lot of money um, doing it that way as well because yeah. I'd imagine if you had to do all this wiring and have somebody come in and do it it, it would have been thousands uh, and uh, by the way there's a couple uh, couple videos I watched we did put ground rods in mm. as well mm -hmm. um, there's some people that don't use ground rods for whatever reason I'd, I'd hate to see what happens if if something does get hit and you know it takes a ground straight into your house and you know blows your batteries out your charge controller or starts a fire please uh, just ground your equipment the proper way so i yeah. think it's i think that's it yeah. i think we've hit everything <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions or comments um about what we did with our solar system feel yeah. free to leave we'll a comment and answer them the best we can yeah. um and again, uh, Renogy has been great to work with. I've called them many times uh, just for simple questions. Um, even when I was putting stuff together, they were pretty nice to work with. Uh, Midnight Solar, uh, I've literally called them. And whenever they're answering calls, their calls go to a guy's cell phone and he answers right away. You could tell he was in his car or his truck or whatever, he was working on machinery. I don't know, but this guy was very intelligent. Like he knew right off the bat that, hey, you have to, like we just changed our charge controller um, parameters. You could tell he was he was going down a highway in a truck or something, you know, but he, he knew right off the bat, hey, I know what you bought. I know exactly what those are. And these are the parameters you need to put into your charge controller in order to charge it properly. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, this guy's really good. He answered. He answered within like two rings. You know, I'm like, I'm think, I'm sitting there thinking I'm going to be waiting on the phone for hours. Yeah. Now this guy gets right on the phone, talks me through what I need to, and I had a big chart full of all kind of voltages and all kind of times and you know equalization, float chart, everything. And it, they were they were great to work with. So it, it worked out. So if you're interested, we definitely recommend um, if you're looking for someone to look into them because they were Absolutely. definitely good and, and reasonably priced and, and all that. So Yeah, and everything that they, they ship out around you is free shipping. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the truck showing up and the guy's like, oh, man, what'd you buy? This mm -hmm. thing's huge. I was like, man, I'm glad I didn't have to pay for that freight bill. <laughs> <laughs> so...
Well, thanks for watching. All right, we're signing off.